You feel the sensation of floating freely in a swirling cloud of magic. You are warm and safe, surrounded by the sound of peaceful beauty. You feel as if you are suddenly totally alive. You can remember every happy moment of your past, taste every favorite sensation, hear all the colors of the universe. This is the true joy of living. Suddenly, you find yourself trapped by darkness. You cannot breathe. The darkness is tearing the warmth, life and magic from your body. Pain! The agony of lungs without air, the burning cold of a body trapped in ice, the terror of helplessness as death approaches. You float, cold and lifeless. You awaken as the sun begins to rise. You wake in a cold sweat. You remember every detail of the nightmare as though it had really happened to you. You straighten out your jacket and retie your boots. Appearances count. Take a drink of the cool water. It tastes like wild strawberries. The werewolf threat has ended. Since you have found and rescued Igor, I have released our gypsy prisoner. It seems he was not a werewolf after all. All the peasant fears were for nothing. You say hello to the Burgermeister. You are a very polite person. Perhaps I should learn some manners from you for dealing with strangers. To tell the Burgermeister about how much you want to be a hero. I am beginning to think that you must be quite a hero already. There is a rumor that perhaps I was mistaken in trying to drive you away from Mordavia. That perhaps you are the hero you claim to be. But you know how rumors are. You cannot always trust what you hear. The gypsy has no doubt returned home to his people. They have an encampment to the east. The people of this town will settle down again. They cried so loudly for blood because they are tired of living so long in the shadow of fear. 
I will be able to get a real night's sleep for once. I do not have to worry that the prisoner will be harmed or that he will escape now. It doesn't... Hmm. Take care. Hmm. Ah, so you are back. Nothing like a good breakfast to get you off to a good start in the morning. Especially when everything's laced with garlic. The innkeeper nods at you. I am well, as always. Nikolai has disappeared from his home. The last time I saw him, he said something about finding Anna. I fear he is dead. It doesn't... You tell about Anna's ghost and Nikolai. So that is why he was excited about Anna. He has gone to her, I guess. Maybe they will be together again. It's nice to believe so. There was some talk of werewolves again when the town folk realized that Nikolai was gone. But I stopped it. There will be no more of that here if I can help it. I will miss Nikolai. He was a good man. I've been looking after him for so many years. It will take some getting used to not having Nikolai around. Nikolai has not been seen in some time. He seemed so happy when last I saw him. He really thought he was going to see Anna. Perhaps he did. There was... You tell about Anna's ghost and Nikolai. You tell... So that is why he was excited about Anna. He has gone to her, I guess. Maybe they will be together again. It's nice to believe so. Take care. It does Always eager happy to know you not customer. Yet. This is a little too easy now. You need to add more weight. You pick up two of the metal weights and put one in each of the baskets. Your legs are too stiff and sore to use this right now. After some rest, you feel better.
It doesn't. It does. He looks at you and then goes back to work. I have been preparing a research report to tell the world about my process for reanimating dead tissue. It is proving very difficult. I must omit no detail or the more skeptical of my fellows will doubt my results. And yet, if I wait too long, some other scientists may publish first. But it is distinctly possible that there are hundreds, even thousands of experimental scientists even now animating their own corpses and trying to publish their results before mine. Then again, maybe they aren't. You say hello to the scientist. I am glad to see that you have survived for another visit here. Mordavia can be a dangerous place. Science is the basis of living an informed life. Without science, there is only ignorance and savagery. With it, we have all the benefits of technology from such simple things as my potions and elixirs all the way up to masterpieces like Frankie. Here you are, one freshly brewed healing drink. Here you are, one freshly brewed universal poison antidote. You ask Dr. Cranium if he can spare an empty flask for specimen collection. Of course, of course! <laughs> I am always delighted to assist scientific research of any kind, and I have plenty of flasks. You may have this one. Oh, to become a certified genius, one must obtain a certificate of genius from the Positively International Genius Society. There's a bit more to it than that, of course, but that's the gist. I'm the only pig in this area. So, if I told you about it, it would not be a secret anymore, now would it? <laughs> All I can say is that the process involves lightning, life fluid, and an attractive recently dead corpse. Oh, and considerable quantities of pepperoni pizza, of course. Many of the Academy scientists are greedy, self-centered, and dishonest. Some of them have negative attributes as well. It is best not to let other scientists know too much about one's research until one is ready to publish the final results. It doesn't... You tell Dr. Cranium about the many undead creatures abroad in Moldavia, about the rumors that vampires inhabit the castle. There are, of course, no such thing as living undead. Frankie is the closest that science can come to such a thing, and she is a product of science, not of magic. Vampires, Rusalki, Revenants, and Wraiths are the products of superstition and fear. Their existence is scientifically impossible. You say goodbye. If you should come across any interesting samples of unusual scientific specimens, please let me know. Perhaps I should keep the results of the Frankie experiment to myself. I am not sure if the world is quite ready for infinitely agreeable artificial women. I shall need to explore the situation much more closely to be certain.
I rescued from the goo. Five, four, three, you've dealt with goo. If it answers one, it won't for two. You say goodbye to the creature, but hear only a faint giggle in reply. Your protection spell has worn off. You provide the area foliage with a long-winded introduction and description of your past exploits. You'd almost swear you heard the trees yawn, but it must just be the wind in the bushes.
Every sense tingles with the feeling of danger. The eye sockets of the skulls glow with deadly energy. Even the hut looks hungry. It's a dead body, artistically laid out for maximum shock effect. Actually, it just happened to fall in that position, but please don't tell him. No one's... So, have you got an excuse for being here, or have you just come to keep me company, or what? So, what are you here for, besides my scintillating conversation? You know, if you keep going on doing all that hero stuff, you're gonna wind up with the goody two-shoes blues. You know, black and blue and dead all over. When I mentioned that you had visited the last time, she didn't exactly get out the welcome mat, if you know what I mean. But once she got over a temper tantrum, though, she got that smile on her face. I'd expect a warm greeting when you get in the hut. Like, you know, maybe you stewing in her cauldron. I was getting kind of bored hanging out here until you showed up. Now I'm dying, so to speak, to find out what happens when you and Baba meet again. Did I mention before that the hut's been kind of flighty lately? I think it's molting. They're just the guards. Nothing inside their skulls but some magic. Not exactly brilliant conversationalists like myself. What, you mean that mortar over there? That's Baba Yaga's personal magic mortar. It's kind of like a flying rowboat. She uses the pestle for an oar. They don't get any wild ideas about flying around in it. The only thing you could use it for is grinding things. The magic is Baba Yaga's specialty. Hey, hands off, buddy. I didn't get to the head of my class by letting strangers poke at me. That did... That would be a good way to get your fingers fried. Hmm. Sounds tasty. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you, buddy. You know, if, you know... Nothing. Nothing. Eh, not bad. Not bad at all. I can tell by the reflections in your eyes that it gives me character. Makes me look mysterious and handsome. Hey, all right, you guys. This guy is okay by me. You can let him through. You've seen better trees to climb. After all, you really don't want to end up hanging around here. Searching it, you find a large knot hole, but there's not anything inside of it. You grind the pestle around in the empty mortar. It's heavy work and you don't seem to be accomplishing anything useful. Hey, 
that doesn't like you very much, I guess, probably blames you for having to fly all the way from Spielberg. Maybe you could find something to win the bird-brained hut over and calm it down. You have a sense of doom hanging over you. A strangely familiar, scratchy voice shouts, NOW! Spirits of the frigid north, spin the water, draw it forth. Frosty spirits summon twice, turn the water into ice. Find yourself trapped in ice. Come for a little visit, are we? A little chat, perhaps? We remember the last time you came for a little visit, don't we, kids? You turned me into a frog, didn't you, ha? Huh? Thought I wouldn't remember you. You thought to yourself, let's just visit Baba Yaga and see what we can turn her into today. <laughs> well, you thought wrong, kiddo. Well, now you're here and all trapped like a fly in a web. Just looking at you reminds me of lunch. So, uh, what'll it be, kids? Hero sandwiches or hero on the half shell? Seeing as he is already frozen, we could just settle for a little ice cream sundae with a whipped scream and nuts. Oh good! We'll just skip the main course and go straight to dessert. Any last words from the soon-to-be supper? You say something properly heroic. Well, wasn't that inspiring, kids? Guess we'll have bologna and freeze for snackies. You tell about Mr. Bones the Gnome, and the reason you came here. So, you come here to help the jester get back his jokes, huh? How fitting. He made a fool out of me because you made a frog out of me. And now I'll make food out of thee. Just desserts, after all. <laughs> so now we can all have our favorite treat to eat. Isn't that right, kids? You'd rather have pie. What? I pie? <laughs> oh, elderberry pie. It's true we haven't had that for a long while. But I can't very well make one now. I don't have any of the ingredients. Hmm. Oh! Poo poo poo, now that you mention it, I'd really like some elderberry pie, with or without ice cream. You're right, he did bring us a mandrake, didn't he? And it made such a lovely mousse. Very well, but it means no ice cream for now. So, Mr. Tender Morsel, I'll give you another chance. 
bring me some fresh elderberry pie, and I won't have you for dessert. Agreed? Good. Vigorously, you nod your head in agreement. Good. Bring us some fresh elderberry pie, or we'll just settle for Adam's apple pie and the minced meat instead. <laughs> We'll recycle this ice around this fool for iced knee later. Mm. Hero Lout, now get out. Well, what have we here? Back in one piece? I sure never expected to see you outside of a quiche again. She sent you after an elderberry pie? Well, you're not gonna find that one in the freezer section of your local store. Boy, I can't believe she didn't meet you. I guess the Sweet Tooth is bothering her again. Fortunately for you, she didn't get a yearning for sweet breads instead. <laughs> she didn't give you the recipe. Alright, let's see. You'll need a pie pan for starch. You'll need bone meal for a crust, grew goo for flavoring, and elderberry berries, of course. Well, it won't be on the shelf with the flour and cornmeal. You'll probably need to make it yourself. Get some bones and grind them. Hey, don't look at me like that. You know, Baba wouldn't like it if you used bones she knows personally, but a bone meal, if you know what I mean. How should I know how you get a pie pan? You're the one with the skull still stuffed with brains. Use them! That's the stuff that leaks out of the Dark One's cave. It's kind of like molasses gone bad. Really bad. You'll need to pick them right off the elderberry bush. Careful or you'll make it cry. There's nothing worse than elderberry wines. I don't know much about it. I don't get around much after all. I think it's a mean green to the northwest. Stay careful around it. If you destroy it, you'll make Baba very displeased with you. On the other hand, it could destroy you. Good luck with the elderberry bush. You'll need it. There's something strange about this bush. Maybe it's the eyes? Oh, forget it. It's probably just an ordinary, everyday bush with blood-red berries and tentacle-like branches. No one... You'll have to get a little closer. The bush seems to be hard of hearing. That hurt. That really hurt.
Think of being stung by a ten-foot-long wasp. You think that would be a relief in comparison? That hurt. That really hurt. Not You've managed to knock a branch with some berries loose from the bush. You strip the berries from the loose branch and carefully store them in a pocket in your backpack. No one seems to be listening. Cast the You can't. Ah. Thank you. 
You can't. A narrow stream of viscous, gooey, grimy sludge oozes its way down the hillside. You slowly fill your flask with the greasy, grimy goo. The heavy odor of decay overwhelms your senses and makes you feel slightly nauseated as you survey this gloomy swamp. Your protection spell has worn off. You are surrounded by the mist and miasma of a swamp which stretches endlessly before you. You pick up a single slimy bone. You already got a good bone. Leave the rest of them alone. The tree field... I just wanted to thank you for saving me. Not many people would try to help a gypsy. Particularly when everyone thinks that they are werewolves. Gypsies are not werewolves. <laughs> you cannot believe the lies of the townsfolk. Visit our camp to the east sometime, and we will welcome you as only the gypsies can. Gypsies are not werewolves, but we are shape changers. I hope to see you again sometime. Farewell!
Good day again. Good to see you. The town is quiet now, and the rumors are few, except for the ones about you. I am well, and I hope that you are also. I know only what legends tell of them, undead which drink the blood of the living. We have always had stories of them here. I have never known anyone here to be harmed by a vampire that we know of for certain. I have not spoken of it before because I know so little. Still, it is very bad luck to speak of it, and the memories of Mordavia are deep. They worshipped it in the monastery, that much I know. The members of the monastery stayed mostly within its walls, but the townspeople feared them. They said the followers were all like madmen, concealed in robes and speaking in whispers. Then one day they were all gone. We heard of the fighting down by the Dark One's cave, of course. No one returned here except for my grandfather. He brought this stuff here and said Irana was dead. That is all I know of the matter. I am sorry if I cannot help you more. Be careful and good luck. about what you've been doing in Moldavia. And be sure and keep me informed. What would you like to know about? They say Nikolai went off to look for Anna for the last time. <sighs> Maybe they're together again somewhere. responsible for keeping order in the town, and he is very serious. But there was some scandal about his grandmother, but it was hushed up. What could you use? Well, besides my regular items like brooms and pens, I uh, really don't have anything else for adventurers like yourself. Nah. I can sell you a very nice large pie pen for 250 kopecks. <laughs> I've always admired the men who can cook. Take care. Don't want to see your funeral. <laughs> Go ahead and walk to the cemetery. <laughs> As my lost husband used to say, may all your travels lead somewhere.
As you repeat the magic phrase you learned from the Nishi, the bushes on the west spring apart as if by magic. Oh, that's right. It Every sense tingles with the feeling of danger. The eye sockets of the skulls glow with deadly energy. Even the hut looks hungry. Your magical lasso floats towards the tree and plucks a single ripe fruit from its branches. You take an ear of the corn and put it away in your pack. You come.
Every sense tingles with the feeling of danger. The eye sockets of the skulls glow with deadly energy. Even the hut looks hungry. Your protection spell has worn off. You better got everything you need to make the pie. I'll help you cook it, courtesy my buddies here. So, did you get it? Show me. I won't let you in without it. Oh, that's right. Try to make me do everything for you. Can't make our own pies then, can we? Well, forget it. Do it yourself. Put the bones into the huge mortar. Now what? You work the pestle back and forth in the mortar. It's hard work, but after a while you manage to grind the bones into a fine bone meal with almost the consistency of flour. You don't need to grind that. The fine bone meal slips between your fingers. You'll need a container in which to carry it. You fill the flask with powdery bone meal from the mortar. Good. Now show it to the head skull over there and get out of the way fast if you don't want to add rump roast to the barber's menu for the night. Looking. That didn't do. Not. 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 The skulls appear to have stopped flashing their lasers. You pick up the pie. It's been cooked to a delicate golden brown. Hey, bird legs! Squat! You feel a sense of menace and the sensation of being watched. You quickly step out from under the trap. A moment later, you hear the voice of Baba Yaga. Not very trusting, is he, kids? Good, it's not like I trust him. Floor click, make him speak. You find your shoes stuck to the floor. Spirits of the swamp and mire, aid me in what I desire. Creatures of the mist, beings of the fog, turn this human into a cute hedgehog. I have a sudden craving for a tiggly wiggly. Perhaps 
handsome hedgehog Grog, Hedge Piggly Swiggly, and Pig Newtons. Hmm. What's that you say? Elderberry pie? Oh, darn! He was bringing that here, wasn't he? I don't suppose a Piggly Wiggle can get the pie from his backpack, could he? Particularly if his feet are stuck to the floor. Oh, pity. Spirits of the mist and moor, restore this man as he was before. So, now my dining delight, do you have what I asked for? Tell about how you made the pie. Well, that's all very well and good. But until I have my elderberry pie in hand, you are in serious danger of staying for supper. Get it? That smells delicious, just the way we like it, fresh from the fire. So, let me think, how should I reward you for such a lovely pie? Mm -hmm. Well, kitty, should we just fry him now, or for an entree have green spleen casserole with a roast leg of man? <laughs> Oh, all right. I suppose he did do us a favor. Wouldn't be polite to eat him now. Besides, he may be useful in the future. So what is it that you want as a reward for your lovely pie? Tell about the gnome and how he wants his humor back. Humor, is it? You want a sense of humor? I'm not sure the gnome really had a sense of humor. Making fun of poor old ogresses. Oh, all right. Take this good humor bar and give it to the gnome. I suppose there is nothing more pathetic than a gnome who can't tell a joke. To take the good humor bar and put it away. You've got what you wanted, and I've got what we wanted. Hasty treat, now retreat. Well, I guess she liked the pie, or you would have taken its place. <laughs> Be seeing ya! Ah.
You are near the northeastern corner of the forest. You can see brightly colored wagons to the northeast. Greetings and welcome to our camp. You are a stranger no longer. When you saved me from death, our lives became intertwined. Henceforth, you are to be known as a gypsy friend. <laughs> Come now. the one my son spoke of. You saved his life. You also enter fearlessly into our den of wolves. You are a man of great courage. We gypsies owe you for our baby, and I believe we will owe you for things to come. Welcome. I am the fortune teller. I will teach you a spell. It will protect you against the dead that rise again. I think you will find this most useful in your questings. The gypsy fortune teller touches your head briefly. Magic flows through you. Now you know the aura spell. Now, let us learn more of you. Why have you come here? And what do you seek? For an outsider, you are most polite. To tell the gypsies your name. We are honored to know your name. It is a good name, a strong name. <laughs> you bear it well. You tell about how you got here. The dark cave? You escaped from there? Ah, oh, you are very powerful and lucky. I would guess that a summoning spell went wrong. That cave interferes with all magic around here. But it is best not to speak of that cave. Someone brought you here for some unknown purpose. Hmm, most interesting. You tell her about the frightening dream. Dreams are messages. Such a message may be obscure or meaningful depending upon the sender and the dreamer. The meaning of this dream may be clear when you have had more of them. You tell about the gnome and his problem. has returned only recently to this valley. We have had scent of her to the far south. But the path to her hut is blocked by magic. You will need to find a way past that magical barrier. You may call me Magda. That is the name I go by with you gorgeous. Gorgio is the word we call anyone who is not a gypsy. We 
are the roving people, the tinkers and traders and tellers of fortunes. We are the dancers in the night and the music in the wilderness. We are the untamed ones who live only by our own rules. We own no land and no land owns us. The world is ours for the travel. Creatures of the night, shapeshifters, skin changers. We are man or beast by our own will. To run on four legs, to howl at the moon, to chase the terrified prey through the hills. This is what it is to be truly alive. Oh, 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 oh. oh the legend of the werewolf is but a folk tale. We change our shape when we choose, not because the moon is in some silly face. The beast with the mind of a man, and a man with the mind of a beast. It is not normally our way to speak so freely to outsiders. So why do I say so much to you? Because you need to know we are not your enemies. You have too many questions that cannot be answered, and your ignorance may be your doom. There is much to you. Your actions to come will affect us all. Do not doubt it. Therefore, I will speak honestly and openly on what I can. Now, I can see by your eyes that our future is linked to you for will or woe. This valley has always been a nexus of power. Magic is very strong here. My people for generations come here to renew and strengthen their ties to the mystical ways. My dear, we are not the only ones drawn by this power. The magician Irana created a magical refuge here. Others more dark were drawn here as well. Oh, be wary and watchful at all times here. The magic of this land has become twisted. There are many dangers around you. Oh. There are many places and things of magic around here. And I am certain you will come across them in your travels. Irana was a powerful magician who came from this area. There is a garden in the forest which she created. Oh, it is such a place of safety for all who visit there. It is said that her final resting place is near here as well. Her staff stands in the town and protects those within the walls from outside harm. There are some things about which even I dare not speak. Even thinking about such creatures attracts them. Let us hope that you never need know of such matters. I have been gifted by true sight and foreknowledge. These are gifts with knife edges. Oh, I have seen my own death and knew my true love's death the day I met him. Still, it is most useful. I will read your fortune in the cards, if you wish. You have only to cross my palm with silver. So much for the legends about werewolves, huh? Or at least, a coin of value. But I warn you, no future is fixed. What the cards show of the future can happen, but only if you take the actions to create this future. And it is not easy to determine what those actions are, dear. Such is life. The Rusalka of the lake near here has been dead for many, many years. You cannot bring her back to life, but you can free her spirit. Our legends tell of the way to free the spirit of one who was murdered. First, she must know who she was and remember how she died. Then you must take the hair of the dead woman and weave it into a broom. You beat the broom three times upon the murderer's grave and he will come forth. 
This act can be very dangerous. Now, if the ghost of the murderer arises, it will attack you. So you must be ready to destroy it. The last thing you must do is to give the spirit that which she truly desires. Then, at last her spirit will be freed, and she will rest. There are many legends about that ogress. We gypsies avoid her when we can. She is dangerous to enemies, and she takes offense easily. She has her hut to the south. There is some sort of magic hiding the pathway there. Her only weakness is her love of food. Be careful if you need to approach her. You can call me Davy. Names are very important. Davy is my name to outsiders. I also have a gypsy name and a true name. True names are not given lightly. Gypsies never ask others for their names. Never say your true name. Never speak the true name of another. To say another's true name aloud gives you power over him, if you are indeed more powerful. Otherwise, it gives him power over you. I was borrowing some corn from the corn stalks outside the town when the Burgomeister and some townsmen came from the gate. I moved behind the corn stalks to stay out of their way. They looked to be heading to the graveyard. Then, one of them pointed at me and shouted, and suddenly, they all grabbed me. I had no chance to run. I had no idea what was going on. I knew gypsies were disliked in the village, but I did not know we were so feared. We are roving traders. Our home is our wagon and campfire. We would have left this valley long ago if the flooding had not washed away the road and filled the mountain pass with swamp. The road from the town used to lead to the pass to the southwest. That was the only way in and out of this valley. This swamp is an ill place, and we gypsies stay far from it. We gypsies are not werewolves. We are shapeshifters. We take on the form of wolves for hunting. of an old gypsy fortune teller. You will initiate this reading of the cards. The shuffling and cutting attunes the cards to those vibrations which surround you. You do not control the cards, nor do I. It is the cards which show what they choose to show. I will reveal to you the meanings of the cards. It is up to you to interpret how they affect you. You may reveal the first card. The first card is the significator. It is the symbol of the subject of the reading. This is the Knight of Swords. This card represents a person who is courageous and skilled. This is one who holds the ideal of chivalry and goodness. One who is willing to face death gladly, to uphold what he knows is right and true. This card clearly represents you, and therefore this reading is about you. 
The cards which surround the significator represent the influences which affect your current situation. This next card represents something from the distant past which is relevant to the here and now. Turn over this card and reveal the influence of your past. This card is the High Priestess. It is inverted, which means the meanings too are turned upside down. The High Priestess is some woman of your past. She is a person of selfishness and passion. Someone who seems to be very powerful, but her knowledge is limited by her own conceit. Turn over the next card to reveal more of this individual. is the card of the miser. This woman of your past has power, but uses it selfishly. This is a person who cares only of her own needs and wants, and does not care what she does or how she influences others. This person is one who, as long as you satisfy her needs and vanity, will be willing to aid you, providing it does not require any amount of effort on her part. However, if you act against her, her vengeance will be swift and violent. This is not a person to disregard, and she plays an important part in the events around you. Reveal the next card, something of the more recent past, which has consequences in the present. This is the inverted king of coins. This is an old and vicious man, someone who is willing to use any means to attain his desires. Someone who is dangerous and cannot be trusted or underestimated. Reveal the next card that we may learn more of this person. Devil, this is indeed an ill omen. This person is influenced by black magic, a man of power and dark desires. Yet the devil is a sign of bondage and subservience, and this person has faced unexpected failure of some sort. This is someone of great evil, someone who cannot be trusted. This is one who will bear you ill will, yet is somehow prevented from harming you or gaining his revenge for now. Should he gain his freedom, this man will seek to destroy all which stands between his goals and himself. Turn over the next card to reveal a surrounding influence. Again, there is a female influence in your present. This is a woman of wisdom and love. She is kind, generous, and virtuous. Let us see what next the cards reveal of this person. The star. It is a symbol of hope and spiritual influence. This is a woman in touch with her magical nature. She is gentle and loving, yet there is great strength within. This is a woman who generates hope and help through her actions. 
The next card reveals the overriding influence upon the future. Ah, the Queen of Swords. She is a woman of wit and skill, yet she has suffered through terrible hardship, and she is marked by her suffering. Oh, she faces her sorrows bravely, but with a deep, deep loneliness. The next card will tell us more about her. The Moon. It is the card of deception. This woman is a deceiver, or is deceived by her own beliefs. This card also reveals the magical nature of the woman. This is the strength which sustains her. Oh, she is either surrounded by false friends or seeks to betray you herself. She is the victim or the villainess. The final card will reveal the influence which will most affect you. The Void. Mm. About this card, I will not speak. I must meditate upon its meaning. This tableau shows the influences surrounding you. These people will affect your life for will or for woe. It is up to you to determine how and what effect they will have upon you. That is all that the cards and I can reveal at this time. Make what you will of your fortune. I will speak no more of it. You say goodbye. Ah, you weary of talk. <laughs> Good. You are a guest with us tonight. Let us join the others for food, drink, and dance, huh? I hope you will enjoy the hospitality of my people. You spend the evening in the joyful company of the gypsies. The gypsies seem to have gone all out to make you welcome in their camp. You've eaten a rich, spicy stew with no garlic, with fresh bread and plenty to drink. Now it's time to relax and enjoy. Come, is she not beautiful? Ah, why do you hesitate? Go, join in the dance! of carousing with the gypsy wolves, you find yourself curling up into a comfortable position near the fire pit and sinking into a deep and dreamless sleep. <laughs>